Hey, what is up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you a few ways that you can get initial access to an Active Directory environment. Now, if you wanna be a pen tester, if you wanna get an ethical hacking, you need to know Active Directory. Active Directory is used by 90% of organizations, including 90% of the Fortune 1000 organizations. And for those of you studying for certs like the OSCP, you know that Active Directory is a huge component of the OSCP. Matter of fact, they just revamped their Active Directory. Now in the OSCP, now you do at least begin with initial low-level AD creds, but from this perspective, we're gonna begin with outside access. Maybe we have VPN access to the Active Directory environment, but we do not yet have a valid user, but we have done some OSINT. We have a few things in our hand. We have some possible usernames and some possible passwords, but our first step is we need to enumerate any active and valid Active Directory users. Without any further ado, let me share my screen and walk you through how we can do this. Now, I am showcasing this from the K2 machine or room on TryHackMe. If you haven't checked out this room, I have detailed walkthroughs for all three machines in this room, but a really fun room that requires web app exploitation and Active Directory exploitation. And I'm gonna showcase some steps from task two, which is the middle camp. We will open up our terminal right here, and I'll just show you what files we are working with. I said, based on OSINT, now if you follow my detailed walkthrough, you'll see how we actually got these. But in the real world, you'll be able to do OSINT and get some valid usernames. So we have some possible AD users. If I just cat that out, I can show you what it looks like. We have two users, Rosebud and James Bold, but we don't know what the username might be like, hence why you're seeing like Rosebud, Rbud, Bud.R, because different organizations might set up their usernames a little bit differently. We also have some possible passwords that we found elsewhere in the environment, and you can see we have three possible passwords here. Now, I do want to be very clear. If you're doing an actual pen test in an Active Directory environment, you need to be very careful with what I'm going to show you, because if you are not careful and do not first figure out the password policy, you run the risk of locking out accounts. Now, you do not want to be the pen tester who jumps on a customer's AD environment and sprays passwords with CrackMap exec or net exec now, and you end up locking out thousands of AD accounts. You don't want to be that person. So make sure before you do any of this in a production environment, you enumerate the password policies and adjust your tactics accordingly based on what you are doing. But this is a lab environment, so we can be a little uh, less careful, which is the beauty of lab a good way to experiment and mess around with things. And actually in lab environments, I've done that very thing where I lock out every user in AD and I have to reset the machine. But it's a lot easier to reset a machine than to tell the sysadmin, hey, sorry, I know you hired me to do a pen test. I just locked out every account. Uh, apologies, right? So make sure you're careful when you're doing this in an actual pen test. Now, there's multiple tools that you can use, but the tool I want to showcase is a tool called Curbroot. And I'll show you this if we open up our handy dandy Firefox, we can just type in Curbroot GitHub. We have the link right here. You can Google it. Otherwise, if I remember, I'll drop a link in the description of the video, but let's be real, I'm probably gonna forget. So just go to Google and type GitHub Curbroot. And right here, we can go over to the releases. And on the releases, we have different uh, binaries that we can download. I am running just typical Kali Linux on AMD. So we will download this binary right here. You can see you can also run this on Windows with the .exe files, but let's go ahead and download this. And we have it. Now I'm gonna copy from my downloads folder. And it's this one right here. And you know, I should add a dot there to copy to my current directory. And you can see we have the file right there. Now, the first thing that we are gonna do is rename it just so it's a little easier to work with. And we can do that just with the move command. And we can go that and we'll just call it curbroot like so. And now it's named curbroot. I'm gonna clear my screen so we can go back to the top. And now we just wanna make it executable. You can do that in Linux by doing change mod plus X to make it executable and type in curbroot there. And now we can try H to see if it works and it does. We can run the help command and see all the options we have access to. And you can see a few things. We have brute force. We can brute force a username password combination from a file or standard in. We can brute force a user, a single user's password, which we're gonna showcase in a second. We can do help, we can do a password spray and we can do user enum and then version. Now first we're going to do user enum because I told you we don't know which users are valid in this Active Directory environment. We have a list of possible users but we want to figure out the valid user. So let's go ahead and do that. 
We have, of course, our possible AD users there. And so we're going to do curb root like so. We'll do user and num because that's what we want to use. And if we don't know what flags we need, we can do H again on user and num, and we can see what we need to do. So it says curb root, user and num, flags, and a username word list. And if we look at the global flags, we need a DC string and the domain, the full domain to use. In our case, it's k2.thm. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. We'll use curb root like so, user enum like we did. We need the DC, which in this case is k2 server.k2.thm. We need the domain, which is k2.thm. And now we need to pass it our username file. So we'll say possible ad users.txt and we will hit enter on our keyboard. And you can see when we do that, we have two potential users. We have jbold and rbud our bud, which are valid usernames. Now that we have enumerated the users, let me show you how we can do some password spraying attacks using curb root as well. The first thing we want to do is let's make another username file with these users in that. So we will just do nano and we can just call this valid users.txt and we have our bold and j bud, I think. Arbold and Jbud. Yep, I believe I did that correctly. And let's go ahead and try to password spray kind of what we've already done a little bit. So if we do curb root again and dash H to see what we're able to do, we want to do a password spray, test a single password against a list of users. And I suppose I put them both in one file, but we'll just specify each user. We only have two users to work with. If we had more than that, we could do a brute force attack, but let's just do password spray against our two users and see if we can find a valid user. I'll clear my screen. We'll cat out our valid users.txt. We have rbold and jbud. So we'll start with rbold just because that's the first one I wrote down. And similar to before, we're going to do curb root like so. Instead, we're going to use the brute user flag. You can actually see this when I did this when I was doing the lab itself. But we'll pass it the domain controller, which is k2server.k2.thm, the domain, same as before. And our passwords, we have the file right here, passwords.txt. So we will do passwords.txt. And our first user on here is R bold. So let's give that a shot. Although I think I think I mixed that around. I think it's actually R bud and J bold. <laughs> I mix it around in my head. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Fingers crossed, and we will hit enter on our keyboard. And there we go. We now have a valid username and a valid user on the Active Directory environment. Now, this really is the first step to compromising an Active Directory environment. Once we have this, we can perform some better enumeration using tools like Bloodhound, which I will showcase in the next video as we dig into hacking Active Directory together. So, hey, hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in a comment. Believe it or not, I do my best to read every single comment on my YouTube channel and even do my best to respond to them, especially if there are questions. So if there's something I did here that was unclear, or maybe you have a better way of doing this, I would love to learn. Let me know in the comments and I would love to hear from you. But thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.